Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and I am picking up where we left off with Combat Commander versus the uh, CC Bot by Rising Sun Studios. We're about to start into round two. Um, but before, I do need to make a few corrections from the previous video. So let's start with something easy. I had said that these, uh, the, I had moved these objectives at the setup. I put them in here where they were shared and then I moved them to each side, but I forgot that the open objectives, if you draw an open objective, they actually are in the game for everybody. In fact, it's got a special note that says tough luck. Um, you don't get a secret objective, but in the solo, uh, CC bot, uh, gameplay, you don't get a, uh, secret objective anyway. All objectives are open. The other thing I did, let's see. Um, so one issue we had is, and this was caught by, uh, by a sharp viewer, uh, we had drawn an event, which, um, uh, I should have suppressed a unit, um, and I, and, and I instead of, I, um, instead of suppressing this unit early in, in the, in the game, I, um, uh, uh broke him instead, and he should have been suppressed, but then he ended up recovering anyway. And so that was fine. Um, that ended up working out okay. Because uh, he got recovered on the next round anyway. So it was no big deal. Alright, and then we also had an issue with... On... Uh, which I covered in the recording. Uh, I did a voiceover which corrected how this action track resets. It only resets if they actually take the action. Not... If they tried and succeeded to try to succeed at an action, you'll see again on this chart, there are, there is the uh, white die is against this to determine that they get an action. The black die is against this to help to, redef to define further which one when there's a choice. Then you draw another card here and if they pass this test, then and only then do you increase um, that. So. What I'm going to do to make up for that, because I did, I did reset that prematurely. Um, so what I'm going to do to correct that is uh, the next time that it would reset, I'm not going to reset it. I'll just leave it at whatever position it is, and then you know we'll be fair to the bot um, in that regard. Also, um, I neglected. Um, I was concentrating so much on um, like when the time happened, when I passed, when the time event happened. Uh, and reacting to, like, if I if I played a move order, I would know to do that, or a fire order. But I forgot on the fire order that the unit could have done concealment, which means it would have added, it would have reduced the fire attack by its, um, its cover value. So to correct that, what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and make this SS unit unbroken, just to restore things there. So I've corrected that, and then my units are still broken, that's fine. Um, even though I forgot to play a, uh, a concealment for myself. Well, actually, I wouldn't have gotten a concealment here because there's actually no cover in this X. So I think that is all the corrections that I need to make. Um, and I'll need to try to remember all the different triggers that cause the bot to get an option at an action. Um, uh, obviously, when I play a fire order, if I move or advance, um, and move or advance is easier because you can check it in for op fire. That's kind of like well known. Um, passing, I got melee. I'll check those. Bot wins a melee. Then he can play this, but in this case, he won't get a chance to play it anyway because the bot is Germany, but the opponent's not Russia. The other option I didn't do, and that's partly made up with this because so far no units have been lost, so no no harm, no foul. Um, I don't. I didn't. Be, I wasn't checking for light wounds when a friendly unit would break. So these two are for the special move orders and fire orders, which are the ones here that are highlighted, and those I knew to look for because they're clearly indicated. So my bad, but fortunately, I don't think anything really uh, too terrible had happened on this. Um, uh, and one unit asked if um, about friendly fire. It's very hard to get a friendly fire. It is, but if you play a move order, and you, it's only the first time you play the move order, um, or excuse me, the first time you act on a move order, as to whether they're going to have friendly fire, uh, excuse me, not friendly fire, op fire. Um, and here is, so if it's if it's recon, if the bots, 
um, status is, um, or, or posture, excuse me, is recon. And they have to get it in a six or greater, unless they're the USA, then it's a five. If they're the attacker, it's a six plus. And if they're the defender, it's a five plus. Because obviously on a defender, you're going to be more apt to play. You're going to be sitting still and holding your fire cards and using them for that uh, more often. So it's improved on defender, but on attacker, it's only on a six plus. So uh, it is a little hard for them to get, you know, not fire, but there's also not that many fire cards in there. And they're probably going to be using them to attack versus um, uh, try to do, uh, up, you know, do an op fire. Because chances are, if they're the attacker, the defender's not moving. So, okay. So I think that is all the corrections that we have from the first video. So we are going to get on. This is my little, I always use the screen die to mark, to remind me between sessions where, uh, where I was. So ignore that. That's not part of the game. Also, today is, I'm filming this on September 18th, and this is an anniversary of sorts for me. I picked up my copy of Combat Commander uh, eight years ago from Amazon uh, with some birthday funds, and uh, I, you know, I was kind of hesitant about getting it, and boy, I'm glad I did. So it is my number one uh, number one favorite game. This will be the last one I ever leave my collection. So happy anniversary, and uh, here we go. So we flip, looking for a two again, and we got a three. So he does advance, and we do track one, which is here, which is the wasted track, because it's artillery, so we're just going to slide that down and go to our next turn. And it's a one, so he does not take an action. His hand was kind of frozen, and so we reset that. Discard these. I should have discarded them before. Draw two. And he's got six. Back to me. Okay, all I have is route and move, so I will use a move order. Both of them are crossfire actions, so it doesn't matter which one I use. So I'm going to take this one, play it. I'm going to move this unit who has four movement points. Now, one requirement on op fire is if I play a move order, but he has to have a. I have to. Have, I have to have a unit within line and sight of range. Um of his friendly unit. So in this case, his units are all way across the board. So that's not gonna happen. So he's, he's just free to move here. So I'm just gonna try to make a rush up to here. A unit has plus one movement if it entered a road hex at any point during a move action. So I don't get the plus one, unless I move up here. But I don't wanna go through this because this makes me stop and I don't wanna take time to go through the, uh, through the woods. So it's plus one for the hedge. So that's, I've got four movement points. So one, two, three, four, and he'll stop there, staying far, far out of the way. And that is it, because I, I would have played a route, but since I corrected that guy, there's nothing else I can do there, so my turn's gonna be over. Draw my next card, we get a fire order, that's good news. And now we go to, back to the bot. All right, it's four, so that is successful. And it's track two. And track two gives him a fire order. So once again, I think uh, what we've what we've determined already is that his best action here is to do a, a group fire, and he's going to do a group fire into this hex where he's already done some damage since they have no cover. So the same as before, we have a six. There, it's all in range. Let's see, five. One, two, three, four. Oh, he can't reach him. So he's recovered, he can't reach him, but these guys can reach him. So I hope I didn't mess that up in the last game. I may have, but anyway. One, two, three, four. So he can reach him, and they can reach. Uh, and even Sergeant Gant can actually reach himself. No, that's movement. Ugh, getting all confused, sorry. Range is five. One, two, three, four, five. I had that right. Eight, he's got range, he doesn't have range. He has range, he has range, he has range. So, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Minus one uphill is a ten for his attack. Ten plus six, sixteen. See if I can do my math correctly today. I made a few math correction, math errors last time as well. So we're at a sixteen. All right. So here we go. This is not going to be good. This is not going to be good at all. All right. So we've got an eight with no cover and no leadership bonus. Is a straight up eight. Going at 16, 
And he's good enough. It's a 13, so he survives. Whoops! Whoopsie! And then Sergeant White is a 9. And a 9 plus a 7 is going to be a 16. That's a tie. He's going to be suppressed after the event. And this event we have is Command and Control. Gain one victory point for each objective you control. All right. So we currently control one, two. So we'll increase the score by two. So that helps. All right. And so now uh, Sergeant White is now suppressed. So we'll give him his suppression marker. This time, so 16 to 16. Okay, so that was his first order. So now it's on to his second. And three, successful. Track five is right here, goes on top. And that gave us an advance order. So again, they have activated except for him. All right, so this is a quandary. This is in advance. Um, what's our unit count here? We got five. That would be nine. So we would overload that hex if he went into there. So I think he's just gonna. I think he's gonna stay back here, and we're gonna use these guys to keep moving, keep moving forward, especially with that heavy machine gun. So they'll advance. So I'm just gonna zigzag. Go up there, staying off to the staying off to the edge. So that's what they've done. So you still have a little bit of uh, where you have to choose for the uh, for the AI which units they're going to use, and you just do what's best. So, like most war gamers, we can true solo playing both sides, but this gives a little bit more uh, um, a fog of war into what command they're actually going to play or have available, and what. Um, uh, you know, uh, if they're going to take any 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 of the extra actions, so you don't go well. I know he's got a fire card, therefore I'm not going to move this time, kind of thing. So it's good; it works out. So that was his second order. So once again, this card reset. Draw two. And did I have something I should have played? This was about to break. I didn't. Nobody broke. Fortunately, no. So, all right, my turn. All right, so I do have a fire order. I have route, and I have move. I think I'm going to do a move again. And I'm going to order this guy, and I'm going to have him just run up here. It says four straight hexes, and nobody's in range because he's blocked on all sides and they can't see through here. So I'm just gonna drag him closer. One, two, three, four. And that's where he is. And he, that command, oh, bup, 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 bup. I think we determined that these guys can fire here. So we are going to issue the fire order and Sergeant Bueller is going to give it to the 50 cal and the pack howitzer. And we're going to fire into hex M7. So it's got plenty of range. 16 range is fine. So it's far power 9. Uh, uh, 9 plus 2 is an 11. Going into that hex. And an 11. Oh, we got a sniper. 11 plus 8. So we'll record the 19. Going into there, but first we have a sniper attack. And it's hex J2. And J2 is here, and nobody's there yet. Darn it. Okay, so we have an attack total of 19, and he is an 8. Uh, 8 plus a 3 is an 11 now. We will lose good opportunity. We will try for. Uh, I play the fire order. So we will draw first to see if he gets it. It's a two plus, so chances are he is gonna get it. So it is a two, I mean it's a six. So he does get the chance at it, so that's a five. So I played a fire order. So a five though only allows him to play a hidden entrenchments if he was the defender. And so he's not the defender. So he does not get to 
uh, plenty of concealment. Whoops! Whoopsie! Um, yeah, so that's it, so it's easy to make it, so that doesn't go down. And then, um, so we're at a straight up 11 versus a 19. And he got a 6, so he's at a 17. 11 plus 6 is 17, so he is broken. Now, let's be behave ourselves. Unit is about to break. He gets a chance at light wounds. So, first off, does he get a chance at it? Only if it's a one, does he not? He does, and this time doesn't matter because this deck does not count toward any of those situations. So he does get a chance at it, and now, to not break, he needs a five or greater on this white die. And he did not get it. Now, he gets another chance. It is in the rules, as I was reviewing the rules, it is in the rules that if the white dice number is a six, the bot will make an additional action check after this one. All right, so he gets to try one more time. So it's still a two. He's gonna try, and it's a four. And for the friendly squad would break, he's still, it's automatic. So now he gets another try at a five on the white die. And he gets a one, so he still doesn't get that. And so this unit is going to break. Okay. So that was the 50 cal attacked. And now the pack howitzer is going to attack. And we've got a range of, let's count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need a nine on our targeting roll, multiplying these two die together. And we get a four times four is a 16. So he did make the targeting roll. Sniper again in two. In, oh, this is a good one. In two. So we are going to break this unit because he is in the surrounding hex. So that was good. Way to go, sniper or rocks in the road or whatever the sniper translates to. So. Okay, so we made the, that roll, now we get out to our attack. He is at a straight up 10, does not get a leadership bonus. So we got a 10 plus, we got another 19, 10 plus 4 is 19, so we'll just stay there. And now he's going at a 10 plus a 3. And since we've already done the fire order, right, it's not taking a fire action, it's playing the fire order. So it's already attacked. He's already tried for that, so he doesn't get that now. It's not like he was holding it. He would have used it before. He doesn't, uh, he's not about to break, so he doesn't get the light wounds either. So uh, right now he's at a 10 plus three, is a 13 going against a 19. And he got an eight, so he's in good shape. He survived. All right, so I am done. I did a fire and I did a move. Yep. So we draw two new cards and we got a fire order. And we got to recover. Yes, I need that. Back to needing a two, as always. You got a three. That advances. And track three is a recover order. So he's going to obviously issue the recover on himself. And he's got two units here that need to recover. There are no suppression markers to remove. So we will go straight up with this one here first. He is a 10. Straight up, no cover bonus. So he draws and gets a eight, so he does recover. And he has a 13, and you still have to draw because you know events can happen, so he's at, he's at a 13. And he's gonna make it with an 11, that would've been close, but no events, and he's recovered. So that helped him quite a bit. And we discard, doing our job correctly. Draw again, got a two, got a six. Advance that, track four. All right, so now we've got a special move order. Four advances and we've got a move order. So we're gonna check the chart. Bot plays a special move order. We're gonna draw to see if he gets it. He needs a two. First and foremost, he gets a three, so he does get that. And if it's a six, 
He can do his requirement is uh, he can do it. He can try for us. He can try for assault fire if he has boxed firepower. So he can move and fire. And he does have units with boxed firepower. So if he wants to move this unit or one of these units and go ahead and try to rush up into here or at least get close to here, he can do that. Uh, the force will give him a cover of two. And so he's going to try for it. The net result is, does he have box firepower? Yes, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So this has happened. So now let's see if he gets one to get to get that. He needs a four or greater. So he's got a 50-50 shot. White die is a five. So he did get it. So now at this point, this would normally go up to here because he did get the action. But I'm going to leave it there since I... I screwed up uh, in the previous video. So because of that, he does get to take the assault fire action. The rules for an assault fire, any unit that is activated to move can then take a fire at any time during its movement. It can also be part of a group. So you can move everybody and then fire. You can move one unit and fire, or you can fire and then move as long as one of your units has boxed firepower. The fire, has, fire attack has to come from units that do have box firepower. But you will see that this SS troop has a box firepower and the light machine guns have box firepower. And so all the SS troops have box firepower. So this is a good, good, good opportunity for them to, to make a charge, um, to make a charge at us. So yowza, if I activate them to move. Now here's the, here, here is, here is still where it's kind of a conundrum because I know that I have a fire card. He does not know that I have a fire card. But the thing is, he's activated to move, but I can still choose which group I want to move for the AI. So I know that as soon as he moves, I'm gonna open up fire on him. So, um, so anyway, that's, I mean, it's kind of tough. That's kind of a tough call to make as to which is the right thing to do for him. Um, doo, 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 doo. I mean, those guys need to get closer. Those guys definitely need to get in close. But then these guys have a perfect opportunity that they can move and we can fire. So... I think we're going to go ahead and just rush them. They're going to be in no man's land there for a little bit, but they've got a great opportunity. So this guy can move five, so he can go one, two, three, four, five, and get into that cover. In fact, he can go one, two, three, four, and get into that cover. In fact, he can go one, two, three, four, five, and get deep in there and hit him from the side. Well, let's just do it. Let's just, no guts, no glory, right? And they're the attacker, so they should be attacking. So Gain's going to activate all this group to fire. And we'll start with him. I think he's going to avoid the road, so at least he doesn't lose the cover that he would have. He's not going to need... See if he goes one, two, three, four, five. He can at least get out of the way. Um, we can just go one, two, three, four, five and get in there. So we're gonna do that. So he's gonna go one. And at this point, I am now gonna go ahead and play my fire, fire card for uh, opportunity fire. But the downside is I can only activate one of these guys. So I'm gonna activate this guy for opportunity fire. And I will give him a little marker so I remember. He's not, a, he's not the greatest firepower because the reinforcements are the ones coming in. But he has a shot. So he's right here. And he has range of four, uh, one, two. He's easily got it. Uh, the hindrance. For 
is nothing. Uh, no, the hedge gives him one cover. Yeah, the hedge gives him one cover here. All right, so he's going to activate here, and he's going to fire. It's not a good shot, but he's going to go and try it anyway. Three. Uh, yeah, he just got straight up three firepower. So three plus ugh, seven. Ugh. Horrible, horrible, horrible attack, but. Maybe you can get lucky on another on another move. So he's got an eight plus a one is a nine. He starts to draw, and he got a nine. He's got an eighteen, so he's safe there. So now his next move will be into here. That's one, two, three. Actually, one, two, three. We'll take another shot. So it's a you can always always get a good draw here. So it's a straight up three uh, again. And I want the clock to go away. We've got an event. 3 plus 7 is a 10. It's a little bit better. Our event is deploy. You may remove an American squad from the map if you do replace it with two matching teams. I do not wish to do that. And uh, so it's a 10 to him. Um, I did play the fire order. Um, I don't know if that applies to opportunity fire. I mean, it is a fire order card. Uh, but I'm going to say he doesn't do it because the cover is not all that great anyway. Right now. So, uh, Alright, so it's just, he's got a straight up 8. 8 plus a 4. He still made it. So he's fine. And now he's going to go into here. And I'm going to go ahead and fire anyway because I want to burn through the deck. So it's the defender. So it's a 3 plus a 5 is an 8. Pretty weak guys. This is their time. This is their time to actually move. Uh, and then he is now an 8 plus a 2 for the woods. He's at a 10. And he does with a 9. So he totally defended it, but he wouldn't waste he wouldn't waste that card there. Alright, so he is finished moving. And I'm going to try to get these other guys into position as well. And they are going to move as a group, in which case they have seven, they have six movement. Moving the building is two. So he goes here, it's two, three, four, five. So again, I want to burn through the deck. So we'll shoot into this hex. It's not going to matter, but we're going to shoot it anyway. So we got uh, we got a uh, four range, two, three, four. We got it. Um, so three. Oh, well, that's a decent decent roll. At least twelve. All right. So we'll go against him first, and he is an eight plus a two plus a three is a 13 and he makes it and then he is a straight up 8 plus a 3 is an 11 and he, he made it okay so now they move to this next hex and they get a 1 so he attacks 3 plus 9 got a 12 again good job going into here 8 plus 2 plus 1 is an 11 for that hex. So he's an 11 plus a 3. It's close. And then he is a straight up 8 plus a 1 is a 9. 9 or 3 is a 12, so he's actually suppressed. He is suppressed. So his movement went down to a 5. So they were here. It's 2 three, four, five. They can actually still move here. So here they go. They still move there. This is in good shape. Good shape-ish. I'll leave that off because we're going to go and fire at him. Why not? So again, a three. Six. 
three plus, uh, excuse me, three, three plus a four is a seven. Clear attack double at seven. Uh, so he is an eight. Um, it doesn't affect command, so he's still a ten. Straight up. He got it, 21. He is eight. No, he's a seven, because he's got a minus one for suppression. So he's at a seven, and we got a time trigger. So let me reset everything for the time. Uh, but he is going to make it, obviously. And now we're going to reset for the time trigger. Uh, the AI deck has been reshuffled. Uh, there were no smoke markers on the board to remove. The time track has moved one forward. Um, the I, the I as the allies received a new unit, so I put them basically in the same place where the other unit was, and um, and we're now both going to play dig in actions. I do not have any dig in actions. When I had my high, <laughs> when I had my high roll, I should have added that plus two firing an adjacent hex, but I wouldn't know until you have to play that first. Um, all right, so we're going to check for a dig in action. It's time event. He's at a two. Yeah, he did not get it, so he's not. He does not play a dig in action. Um, and you shuffle the action deck when completed, so that still does not happen. So because he did not get it, so he did not complete a dig in action. So uh, back to where we were. Uh, he defended, so he was fine and he was safe. That was the end of that fire attack. Going into there, and now they're done moving. All right, so the last unit is this guy. He's activated to move. He could go, he's got five, so he can go one, two, three, four, five. That's about as close as he can get. So rather than have him get up here and just be a sitting duck, I think I'm gonna just move him straight to two into this to keep control of this. And he is still within range of being activated by this leader who has a two command radius. So that is the end of the move order. Now for the attack. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's here. He can go one, two, three, four. And he can still be a part of a fire group. So I think we will do that because he does get one cover here. So, and then that weapon can come to bear. So, um,. Go ahead. You know, and I also wasn't giving myself the plus one for downhill. I don't think we've been that close, but so I'm not going to worry about it. But he is supposed to get plus one for firing downhill, and when they fire, it's a minus one. So, all right. So technically, he has moved here. Range four, one, two, three, four. So he's a three plus one. Plus eight is a twelve. We got a 12 here going against a straight up eight. And he gets a four, so he is now suppressed. So that is good news, because he has to stop. Oh no, his movement is now at four. He has spent two movement points to get into there. He can't use the weapon though. So he had five. He had five and he used two, so now he's at three. Minus one is a two. So he could still move to here, but he wouldn't be able to be part of the fire group because he can't use the weapon anymore. So does it, do I risk him getting close or do I can't move him into the building because that would be three and he's only got two left. So interesting. Interesting choice here. What do I do? Um, I could flee him back this way and at least get him into some cover. But I think he's going to go ahead and just move forward. So he moves there. And we're going to take a shot. Three, four. Plus five is a nine. Not that great. He's an eight minus a one for the suppression. He's a seven. And we have an event, so he's passed, and our event is 
Your opponent must reveal a secret objective. Well, big deal. Because <laughs> they're all open anyway. Okay, so he survived that one. He's going to go ahead and move here. We're going to go ahead and take a lucky shot. Three, four, five. Uh, four, excuse me. Four. Plus, oh, that's a good one. Nine is 13. One of our better ones so far. 13 going against the seven. Uh, now we're going to give him the cover. I said we'd give him the cover. It might be wrong, but we'll give him the cover. So seven uh, plus a one is an eight. Eight against a 13 is a six. He's got a 14. He survived. Sniper in J1. Because J1's here and there's nothing there. So, everyone is now moved. So they were all initially activated to... Um, they were all initially activated to, uh, to move. He's suppressed, so he can't, he can't attack. Um, no, wait a minute. He can't use the weapon. He can't attack, because he's at a... He's at a minus one range and a minus one firepower, but he's still boxed. So his range is still plenty to get to here. So he can be part of the attack. He's still a boxed firepower. That's a boxed firepower. And his command is not hurt. So they're all active and they're going to attack. So we're gonna lead with this one, which is a six plus two is an eight. An eight and six plus two, yeah. Eight and nine. 10 and 11. Yep, so an 11 firepower minus one for going uphill is a, uh, t it's a 10. Now he is not playing a fire order, so he cannot, um, he did get the assault fire, but he's not playing, he's taking a fire action. He's not actually playing a fire order, so therefore he cannot try to get any of these uh, extra bonuses. He only gets the straight up fire order on this. So he is an 11 minus one is a 10 on his attack into this hex. And he gets a 10, oh, weak attack. 10 plus four is a 14. And his a six morale, three for his cover is a nine. And I have no uh, no actions I can use, so I'm at a nine, going against fourteen, and we got a seven, so we got a sixteen. We made it. We also have an event, and the event is suppressing fire. Suppress one enemy unit in hex in a hex with both range and line of sight of a friendly machine gun. I only have one machine gun. That's this one right here. I don't think I'm going to have line of sight to any of these. So let's check it out with the tail of the tape. This, yeah, he cannot shoot to that hex. He cannot shoot to that hex. He cannot shoot to that hex. He cannot shoot to these hexes. So darn it. <sighs> you get something good and you don't get something good. So we did not get that. So that was the end of his second order. They moved, they're done moving. They did their fire attack. And what stinks for me is I don't have another fire card. I could use this, hand grenades. I've got this satchel charge, this Panzerfaust I can use really close up. <laughs> and, and this is the perfect text to hit with it. I don't have fire order. So we'll take the uh, my opportunity fire marker away, and the AI is done. So we will reset, and we will draw two cards to reset his deck. Come over to my deck, and I don't have much. And it's getting a little crowded here as they made their move. So. Got some issues going here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and play my recover. Yeah, 
when I'm playing recover on myself. So the suppression marker goes away. And now we are going to try to recover Sergeant White first. He has a straight up nine. And his recovery is a 12 and we got another time trigger. So nothing happens. He does not, he's not gonna recover. Uh, blinded by the light there. He's not gonna recover, but we are gonna reset for another time trigger. Okay, so we're back from the time trigger. We've now moved into turn four to start. Shuffled my deck. I uh, got a new unit, put him one space ahead so he can still cut down and go that way. Um, no smoke markers. I have no dig in actions. And now the AI gets to try. Since we got another time marker, they get to try for another dig in action. So they need a two. They got a six. They get to try for another action, but in this case, there's no there's no point to it. Uh, they do not need to check the black die because nothing matters. It is a dig in action. If they get a five or greater on the white die this time, and they did not. So, because again, they do not get a dig in action. And uh, we will finish this turn here. Um, he had remained, he did not pass his rally roll. Sergeant White did not pass his rally roll. So now the elite unit has to, he doesn't get the benefit of any uh, any leadership. So he's got straight up eight. Um, right, so he's got an eight. Let's see if he recovers. And he gets a seven, so he is gonna recover after the event. And the event is shell shock. Break the unit closest to a random hex. Oh dear, this could be bad. And it's 06. Oh, fortunately this is gonna be good because 06 is right here. In the unit closest, one, two, three. Yeah, they're all far away. So this unit here, and he is broken. This isn't a may, this is a must. So he has now been busted and suppressed. And that, that was one of our time cards. So that worked out pretty good. So we got that out. Actually, I want the time cards, that's what I'm saying. So we come back over here. So he did recover. So he is now active. Sergeant White is still busted. So that was my first order this um well actually i can now play a route card so i'm not gonna i'm gonna use this route card because i haven't played two orders i use the fire as an opportunity fire so i'm gonna play that and i'm gonna try to route this guy back yeah this doesn't count for this doesn't provide cover this is for fire cover this is not for morale cover because it's not a fire that's coming in it's just a morale check so he's a straight up 10. um He's a nine with the suppression. So we're gonna do a route on him. We want a big roll, we want a time card. And we got a nine. So it is a nine. He is a nine, he gets suppressed, but he's already suppressed, so nothing else can happen. Nothing else can happen there. All right, so that was my second order. Second order, gonna draw two new cards. Fire, oh, three new cards, gonna draw hand size four. Fire, that's good. Recover, that's good too. So that is my hand. And when we come back in the next video, we will be doing the AI's turn. And like I showed you, I'll put my little die there so I remember it's their turn. And we will continue in the next chapter. So subscribe, leave your comments. Again, thank you again for everyone who did leave comments earlier. And, uh, Gave me good input on what I might have done wrong. And uh, if you see something else here that I missed, definitely let me know. It's been kind of kind of back and forth. A lot of just spitballing shots and things like that. But it uh, looks like it's starting to get exciting. So we will have more to come in the next video. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.